when seizures persist for more than five minutes or don't respond to first and second line anticonvulsants, the patient is considered to be in status epilepticus. Untreated, this can be fatal or leave a patient with permanent neurological injury. But don't panic. Management of status epilepticus is relatively straightforward and orderly and is usually very effective. For a patient in status epilepticus, start by addressing the ABCs. Start nasal prong oxygen or mask oxygen. Start telemetry and pulse oximetry. Intubation may not be necessary initially if oxygenation is good. If not intubated, turn the patient on their side to diminish the chance of aspiration and protect the head and extremities. Obtain a finger stick glucose. Obtain a complete blood count, metabolic profile with serum magnesium and calcium levels and liver function tests, and arterial blood gases. Also, obtain anticonvulsant levels if appropriate and a toxicology screen. Place two large bore IVs and run maintenance normal saline. Give thymine 100 milligrams IV and dextrose 50 milliliters of 50% if a newly presenting patient has no known history of a seizure disorder or definitive etiology. Hold dextrose if finger stick glucose is within normal range or is elevated. Start first line anticonvulsants, which are benzodiazepines. Lorazepam, 4 mg IV, or midazolam, 10 mg intramuscularly. Repeat if no response within 30 seconds or so. If there is no response within a minute or so to the second dose of a first line anticonvulsant, go to a second line anticonvulsant. Administer phosphenitoin 15 to 20 phenytoin equivalents that is PE per kg IV, at a rate of less than 150 phenytoin equivalents per minute. Phosphenytoin is metabolized to phenytoin, so its dosage is given in phenytoin equivalents. Alternately, you can administer phenytoin, 15 to 20 milligrams per kilogram IV, at a rate of less than 50 milligrams per minute. Note, exceeding the recommended dosage rates of phosphenitoin or phenytoin risks severe cardiac complications. A further dose of phenytoin, 10 mg per kilogram, can be given at a rate of less than 50 mg per minute if additional medication is deemed necessary. For example, if there is continued seizing despite full administration of the first dose. Alternative second-line anticonvulsants can be considered, but phenytoin and phosphenytoin remain the workhorses in status epilepticus because they have shown good efficacy with long-term use. Alternative second-line convulsants include levetiracetam, valproate, and phenobarbital. Phenobarbital is heavily sedating. Note that levetiracetam has become popular in many centers because of its excellent safety profile, but its efficacy in status epilepticus has yet to be well established. A critical point to recognize is that the goal is to get the seizures under control within 30 minutes, so much work needs to be done simultaneously. As the first-line medications are being given, the second-line medications need to be ordered stat and drawn up. As the second-line medications are being administered, preparations should be made for intubation and the administration of anesthetics. If the patient is not responsive to first- and second-line medications or is seizing for more than 30 minutes, go ahead and intubate the patient and start administering general anesthesia. Use either midazolam, 0.2 0.2 mg per kilogram IV load followed by 0.2 to 0.6 mg per kilogram per hour infusion, or propofol, 2 mg per kilogram IV load followed by a 2 to 5 mg per kilogram per hour infusion. 
Don't sit around for half an hour hoping the medications will take effect and then call the intubation team. Rather, be prepared to go to intubation as soon as it's clear the seizures may not respond to first and second line medications. Don't fool around trying multiple medications from the first and second line groups. Go with one of each and be prepared to intubate and administer anesthetics. Most persistent seizures will respond to general anesthesia. If you are treating status epilepticus with general anesthesia, you'll need to order a continuous EEG, and you should consult neurology for support. On the other hand, those patients that have responded to level 1 or level 2 medications should undergo a standard EEG as soon as possible. For all patients sustaining status epilepticus, an extensive evaluation for precipitating factors should be undertaken. As potential etiologies, consider insufficient anticonvulsants, structural lesions such as hematomas, tumors, abscesses, metabolic derangement, systemic infections, medication interactions, and others. What about medical imaging? A non-contrast CT scan of the brain should be obtained to rule out an acute pathology. Stop the seizures first, however. A pre- and post-contrast MRI of the brain should be obtained if one has not already been done so in the admission. If a patient is found to be unresponsive and definitive etiology cannot be determined, consider non-convulsive status epilepticus and order a 24-hour EEG. We have seen this entity with some frequency, mostly in the ICU setting, often with neurosurgical trauma patients. There are several other forms of status epilepticus, such as focal motor status, absence status, and partial complex status. These are atypical and should be addressed up front by a neurologist. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.